When indexing Revit content into a veil, one of the things you might have seen is that these keys and tags automatically show up, such as Revit version, host, and Revit category. So you're probably asking, like, where do these come from? Like, how do they automatically get there? And so what I want to demonstrate today is a little bit about our Revit tag generator uh, and how that works. Um, so let me let me start off by saying that there is um, a header file uh, inside of each uh, piece of content, family, Revit project, and so forth. And we are able to extract that and read that header file and pull out that information. So the way that we do that is through our tag generator. Um, so if you open up um, a Windows File Explorer, as you can see here, I've actually gone into, um, I'll back out and do this again. So I go to percent program data percent and if i hit enter it'll bring me up and i can go to the veil folder and into the add-ins folder now each installation has this file so make sure that across your organization that you share this file if you're using it um, across all your publishers but if you can go here you're going to see and notice that there's a revit tag generator file now this is an xml document so here's what we're going to do we're going to right click and i'm going to edit this with notepad <clears throat> So I'll bring this over, and what you're going to see is, is I'm going to take these two out right now, and I'm going to hit X. And one of the things you're going to find out is that you're going to see that there's instructions, and you can do adding keys and examples and predefined keys, and you can read all this um, uh, when you go through and look at it. But what I want to concentrate on is these four because these are de default when you install a veil. So you've got Revit version, Revit category, host, and file type. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to hit save. Okay. And now it's going to ask me to be administrator mode. I'm going to hit yes. I'm going to hit yes again. All right. And so this is what your default um, kind of looks like. All right. So this is what you're going to see when you first open it up. So let's go ahead and do a couple of modifications. And I've copied these out on purpose so you can see them. So I'm going to just copy them in. So here's what's happened. I've added the Omni class number. There are all kinds of shared parameters. It could be a custom shared parameter, be a parameter within your, um, within your environment, within your uh, business that you're using, uh, within your company that you're actually sharing or you have custom parameters that you want to use, and you can pull those out. In this case, I just grabbed a generic one, which is the Omni class number. We could go grab the Omni class title uh, if we wanted, but you can see if I scroll down, there's low classification, keynotes, assembly codes. There's all kinds, especially all of your custom. Something else I've done here is just so you can see how I've done a translation. So you can do key translations where I take the Omni class number. I don't want that to be the key. I want it to actually be table number. So I can translate the name of the Omni class number into a table number. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save this again just so you can see it. Uh, and I'm going to close this. All right. So just want to make sure I'm going to make sure that this is here. So Omni class number, Omni, you can see this Omni class number translation. So I'm going to save this. Okay. I've got here. And then I'm going to go back to my new channel that I created. So I created this brand new channel, XML tag generator. Uh, I'm going to come over here like this. And I'm going to grab this dining room table and chair. So I know this has an Omni class in it. I know that it's got the Omni class number, so forth. And I'm going to grab this table. I'm going to index it right into a veil. Now I'm going to go ahead and skip a lot of these steps. Uh, I'm going to hit skip all the steps. And I'm going to just index this right now. So why this indexes, what's happening is, is it's going out. It's finding that it understands where the path to this file is. It's going to grab this information and then it's going to go and extract all the XML uh, that we've asked it to do. It's going to store it in AWS. It's going to create. And now you can see here, I'm going to refresh this channel. And what you're going to find is that all of a sudden I have this dining, table dining round uh, with chairs RFA. So what you're going to see, though, is that, whoa, wait a minute. I thought that I was looking for Omni class and I was grabbing that number. So understand, because this channel was already created and I had some keys already defined, it doesn't know that those keys exist yet. So if you come over to your tags and filters section, 
you're going to notice that in the bottom of this specific tag generator that I now have these two new values. So one of the things to make sure is that if your active keys have been set, to make sure you come back and set your active keys to all. So let me come back. And now you can see within this table, I have this nice dime, table dining room uh, family. And now you can see at the bottom that I have the Omni class number. And then I had the translation, same tag, same number, but I translated Omni class number into the table number. So that's a quick snippet on how to use the XML tag generator. Be sure to email uh, support at getavail.com if you've got any further questions on how to use uh, the Revit tag generator. Thanks.